Octavius. You can't play on that. A boy is playing on that. Well, what if there was a games console that meant humans of the female persuasion like you could play a game? Wouldn't that be great? Look, Octavius, your male friend got you a Casio Loopy. There's all sorts of fantastic games for you to play. And the best part of it all? You can print out lovely stickers to stick anywhere you want, straight from the console. But, oh no, don't you be putting those stickers in places you shouldn't. You wouldn't do that, would you, Octavius? You're not a bad girl. You're a good girl. A very good girl. Well, Octavius, are you going to say thank you? No, no, not like that. I think you know what I mean. Oh, you thought he was just your friend, Octavius. You should know by now that pretty girls like you never have male friends. Now stop being such a frigid bitch. The Casio Loopy, the gaming system for girls. All right, that's enough of that joke. I can't be bothered to explain satire to some people in the comments. The Casio Loopy isn't an especially well-known gaming console, but what makes it interesting in the history of gaming is that it was the first commercially released console designed specifically for girls. Well, technically the first console. Before the Loopy, the Super Lady cassette vision was made specifically for the ladies. You can tell, can't you? Because, aside from the ridiculous name, it's pink. And pink equals female. Now, the console itself wasn't developed specifically for women. It's basically a Super Cassette Vision, which was released in 1984 in Japan only and made by Epoch Co. The only differences between the original Super Cassette Vision and the Super Lady Power Vagina one was the colour. And it also got a game released with it called Milky Princess. You could argue that this is the same concept as making a pink DS, but in fairness, nowadays pink consoles aren't outrageously marketed for women. That being said, I really f***ing want one of these bad boys. Look, it comes with its own little dinky briefcase. Need. Thankfully, the games industry is becoming more and more accessible to people inside and out, regardless of their gender, orientation or colour. And that's awesome, but it wasn't that long ago that project teams in big companies genuinely came up with this kind of laughable bullcrap. You just have to look at some of the adverts for some retro gaming consoles and software to know that gaming was kind of targeted mostly at men. Women have been historically underrepresented in gaming, as gamers, game characters and people behind the games. In 1995, the Loopy was released in Japan only. It was also known as My Seal Computer SV100. I think seal is the Japanese word for sticker. That should give you a clue about what's coming. It was an overall sort of appealing looking console with big features like this massive reset button and cutesy adverts. And yes, it was marketed as a game console, specifically for girls. Now, of course, whether because of societal constructs or because of psychological makeup, there are, generally speaking, differences regarding the kind of games that men and women might want to play. Data scientist Quandrick Foundry did a study in 2017 regarding the male and female split of gamers. They found that of a sample of women queried, the women were considerably more likely to like matching games and puzzle matching games such as Candy Crush, farming sims like, I suppose, Farmville, and casual puzzle games. 93% of men liked first person shooters and only 7% of women liked them. Obviously this is subjective, you can't say things like all oh, women prefer puzzle games because that's not true. As a woman myself, I absolutely adore games where I can shoot things in the head with a shotgun. That doesn't make me any less of a woman. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Prior to the release of the Loopy, Casio had released a bunch of home computers, but only one home console. Although I know that some people consider the Casio MSX computers, PV7 and the PV16 as consoles because they could accept cartridges, they're wrong. The PV1000, Casio's first home console, was released in 1983 in Japan only. Allegedly its internals were quite similar to the aforementioned PV7 and PV16, but it was marketed as a console. As you can see, it looked more like one too, but only around 15 games were ever released for it. This one failed commercially, and given that it was released in the same year as the NES, that's not a huge surprise. It's hard to come across these days, so it's fair to assume it was pulled from the shelves pretty soon after its release. Which is interesting, because years later, in 1996, the very same thing would happen to the Loopy. Although information about the Loopy console is sparse, by all accounts this thing was discontinued just a couple of weeks after it was launched. With 13 years between the PV1000 and the Loopy, surely that was plenty of time for Casio to get it right. 
So why did it fail? What could possibly go wrong? Well, first of all, let's look at the console. Something you probably noticed already is that half of it is taken up with what looks like a cassette player or something. This is not a cassette player. This is where you would put your blank sticker cartridges. And this is where the stickers would come out. Now, obviously, if a good chunk of your console is taken up with a sticker maker, it's fair to assume that at least a couple of the games are going to involve sticker making. Or if it's a really rubbish console, then pretty much all the games are going to involve sticker making. Oh, Jesus. The Loopy appears to have been designed for girls and teenage girls. And by teenage girls, I mean uh, maybe anybody under 15? It's kind of hard to tell. The games themselves are cartridges and look like this. And that's all I've got on the cartridges. I already said there's very little information about this thing available. There is just the one controller port for the Loopy. This confuses me. Now, I don't want to sound sexist and cliched, but I am about to sound sexist and cliched. Isn't there a whole thing about young teenage girls getting together and having pillow fights and talking about boys and stuff as a group? So surely it would make more sense to have a Loopy that had more than one controller so you could play it with your friends. In all seriousness, there seems to have been a bit of a missed opportunity here. I don't think I am. I don't think there's anything sadder than a young teenage girl sat alone in a room making stickers on a loopy. Kind of feel sad now. The standard game controller had a D-pad for four face buttons with a start button and shoulder buttons. You could also get a mouse to use instead, sold separately. When I show you the games later, you're going to wonder why the heck it didn't just come with a mouse rather than this amoeba -y controller. As you might expect for such a short-lived console, not a huge amount of games were released for it. I was only able to find 11 officially released ones, and no information regarding whether any others were made or planned. The owner of this loopy who I pestered for this video had only 4 games in his possession, so let's take a look at them. Anime Land! Sounds awesome! There's all sorts of things that could be. I'm hoping some kind of top-down RPG where you go around making friends with anime characters. It's literally just a program where you design an anime character and then you print it. Huh. Well, that's rubbish. The stickers are released from the console by pressing a button on the side, which cuts the paper. It's nothing fancy, just a pair of scissors inside the unit. Kind of satisfying to press, though. Dream change! I'm guessing some kind of fashion show? So dressing up then. Alright, well, this probably isn't that great, but it's got potential to be an addictive game. I mean, I'm sure if I understood what was being said it might be better, but this appears to be just a game where I pick an outfit in different locations. And that's it. Well, that's rubbish. Where are the planes from this airport going? Is it far away from this game? Let me on board! Harry Harry Seal Paradise! Again, I think the seal means stickers. This isn't about seals. Unfortunately. Whoa, seals are terrifying. Alright, this has got to be the least gamey one of them all. This is basically just a catalogue of sticker designs. Some of them are very cute, others are a bit odd. That's it, it's, it's just scrolling through a load of pre-made stickers and you can edit them if you want. Add text, add shapes... Well, that's rubbish. I have to say, one thing about all the games is that they are all frigging adorable. I mean, really very cute. I would love to have these as stickers. I wouldn't love to have to shell out hundreds for a game console to have them as stickers, though. I mean, so far, we haven't really played anything. Bow Wow Puppy Love Story. Cool, is this going to be a cutesy game where I look after a dog? What is, what is happening here? Well, I would be able to tell you what it is, but it's been 15 minutes in and I'm still just playing catch with this stupid frigging dog and nothing else is happening. I am incredibly upset. I mean, to be fair, with the sticker games, it's not just moving sticker designs around. You can do stuff like change and add text and for some reason, you can usually change the music that's been played while you're editing. Good. What were they expecting? Girls to have this music on while they jammed out in their bedrooms? This is really bizarre. Also, games like Harry Harry Seal Paradise let you make name tags and stuff, which is cute. I can see that that must have been quite sweet for textbooks and the like. But again, I don't know if it justifies buying a whole console. Well, I do know if it does, and it doesn't!
Remember all those buttons and the D-pad on the controller? I have no idea why they're all there. All you do is move a sticker around and then just press a button to set it. On a couple of the games, if you press the shoulder buttons, you'll change the music. These games really didn't need a complicated controller. Like I said, there was a mouse sold separately, but by rights it should have been the default controller. The supplied controller makes playing these games especially difficult. Any sort of point and click might feel a bit weird when using a controller. This takes it to the next level. It feels like such an effort to get the cursor from one side of the screen to the other. This thing is just awful. It's tatty. It looks cheap. It does nothing. How much was it when it was released? Because however much it was, it was too much. The Loopy was priced at 25,000 yen on release. That's about 170 pounds taking into account inflation. Now that's quite a low price really, bearing in mind that the PlayStation 1 was more than 300 quid on release with inflation. Other games in the tiny selection available included Mr. Chakra's Charm Paradise, which was something to do with making spells and charms. I expect to print them out. Lupitan's Wonder Palette, which was essentially a colouring book. One which sounds like it might have been an actual game is I Want a Room in Loopy Town, which would let you design your dream home by working a part-time job to pay for posh furniture. Basically a sort of crappy version of Animal Crossing. Although one plus is that it didn't have that bastard raccoon. I'm going to force you to get a mortgage and work minimum wage to pay it off in my shop. Welcome to capitalism, bitch. God, I hate that guy. Supposedly you could get an extra accessory for the Loopy, which would let you capture images from VCRs and DVD players. So I suppose if you really wanted a sticker of a scene from EastEnders, then you could. Now, on top of all this that made the Loopy a poor console, let's think about the time it was released, 1996. That's in the fifth generation of home consoles. This was going to be up against the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation, and the Nintendo 64. Honestly, this piece of tat had no chance. It's sort of sweet that Castio thought they could really claim a share of the gaming market, even just in Japan alone with this thing. Now, I don't have any children, but I do remember being a little girl, and honestly, this is the kind of thing that I would have played with once, put stickers on literally everything in my dad's house, and then never played with ever again. Oh. Oh yeah, that video was so rubbish I forgot I had a baby with Ms. Pac-Man. Have you been feeding him? Another thing of note is that the Loopy was a 32-bit console, the same as a PlayStation 1 and the Sega Saturn. But I mean, does it look as good as any of the games on those other consoles did? No, it doesn't. What person in their right mind would choose this over this? A nutter, that's who. Or I suppose a well-meaning parent who's about to find stickers all over the house. In all seriousness, I know that the majority of my male identifying audience are not sexist, but stereotypes are harmful, and this console is for a stereotype. And I'm very happy that today, little girls in this country anyway, are actively encouraged to play whatever games they want. Jokes aside, it's not the concept of making a video game console for women that I find particularly hilarious. Marketers try to market to a market segment, and in marketing, the majority rules. It's the patronising and ridiculous idea that young women and girls are so daft as to be entirely entertained by a glorified sticker maker if they're above the age of, say, three. But I'd be very happy to bet that if a console was made for a female market segment today, it wouldn't be anything like this trash. As gender stereotypes are reduced, I won't be surprised if by the time I'm a grandmother, the gender disparity I talked about earlier on in that study is pretty much equal. And what a day that will be. Except I'll be really old but I will have a hot 30 year old boyfriend. Hello? So girls, what stickers are you going to make for your favorite console today? The stickers, they're everywhere. Jesus fucking Christ.